Today we're working on sliding Soji screen doors. We're finally to the last project and I'm excited. While everything doesn't quite go as planned. We're not out yet. Let's do it. All we did is lost one major important tool for the entire build. We can do this. And we have some kind of major problems. So suddenly, <laughs> building the store has become really dangerous. We managed to make it work. Hey, that yeah. looks really, really good. It's all part of building modern. Good morning. Good morning. So we are finally getting to the very last project of our shed build, and it is the door. That's right. We're working on the door. We're finally there. Uh, so we've been building the shed for, I mean, since February, and it is now September. Uh, just to give everybody a reference of how long we've been building the shed. There was a big, shed. massive break in there. So There are several breaks. We had to work, all this stuff. Yeah. We're finally to the last project, and I'm excited. <laughs> so it's going to be the door for our shed. It's kind of in a Soji screen style look. Uh, Soji screens are for interior. That's not what this would be called. When we tried looking this up, Soji screen is just such a major term that everybody knows. I couldn't find what the term is for a Soji screen used for the exterior of a home. Yeah, I mean, it is. That's what it's going to look like anyway, though. So. Right. I found plenty of photos examples. They're just all called Soji screens. Yeah, it's not going to be made out of paper, so... Anyway, maybe it is a Soji screen. Anyway, but it's going to be a door. There's going to be glass. It's going to be fun. We're doing it a little bit like how we did the sliding windows before. Not quite like it. Wait to see. It's going to be a few differences, uh, but it is a lot to do, so we better get going. Okay. The first part to making our doors is to use a track saw to straighten our 2x6 lumber that we purchased. While it is 2x6, it's not actually straight. They're all milled down. Okay, with that, we have the one piece cut and all seven boards that we need. Uh, I had nine boards total out of the seven, uh, just in case I needed some extra. And it turns out those two extra ones were actually warped where they uh, were twisted as you went along them. So I'm glad that I had the extra. Now that we have straightened one side of the two by six boards with the track saw, we need to pass them all through the table saw to get them the exact same five inch width. Turn that off. Turn it off. It's off. Okay. Okay, so uh, just like any good woodworking project, just as things are getting going, something breaks. Uh, so our really nice table saw that's pretty new to us, uh, it just stopped working just then. Uh, we've tried hitting the res reset button. I've reset the fuse on the house. Uh, there's really nothing more for me to do. It just doesn't want to work. So glad I have a track saw. So now what I'm doing is I took a board that we've already cut and I've marked it to make sure that we get it the exact same size. So we're going to take this board here. I've, I'm going to mark it, you know, along it. Drop it down next to it. Put it over just like that. We're going to set up the track and finish our cut. And then we'll just have to do that. We have one last one. We'll just have to cut entirely with the track saw. Um, guess it's just how it is. Hopefully I don't need that table saw for other projects in the near future. We'll find out. All right, so now we've done that. What's our next step, Anna? Time for planing. Yet another project with planing. <laughs> My favorite thing. <laughs> well, it's good we have a planer. Yeah. I mean, this would be a lot harder without it. Yeah, and these boards really are, they may look very similar in thickness, but there's some that just have like weird cuts on them that are not flat. Okay, so update, the table saw is officially broken. Yeah. Uh, it is not turned back on. I've tried the reset button. I've tried everything. It's probably something internally. It could be a capacitor or somehow it's not getting power. Sounds like a fake part. <laughs> not a fake part. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> that means that everything that we were going to do with the table saw is out, which means the mortise and tenon that we are going to do for it, or a mortise and floating tenon. Yeah, loose tenon, like loose in there, tenon. like that thing with like how it's like a biscuit, but... So it's all, it's all out, uh, all out the way. Yeah, because you need the table saw for that. Well, and even if we just could make a jig and then use the router, you need we got to have a yep. table saw to make the jig. Yeah. So that's how. 
Um, so now we're going to go the route that I was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, we're like, that's cheaping out. So we're going to have to go with pocket pocket screws. Yep. Uh, Super it's a professional. Shed. We got to get this done. I'm just going to have to practice on another door later. Yeah, we have other doors that are hollow core doors in our house that we can make solid core doors. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, and do those and use those as practice for doors. So, so okay, uh, at least we got everything cut. Mostly everything got cut down to size. Uh, so that was good. Uh, we've got everything plain now. So the next thing we need to do is use the router table uh, to route out the corners where we're going to inset the glass and anything else. I still think I could assemble the whole thing and then route it out with clamp and guides. And that way. It. I don't think we can. And then uh, we've got to put in the glass. Well, we've got I guess we need to have the right bit. Cedar on the front, we do have the right bit. Uh, and then that should be it. So, and then we gotta install it and we gotta do these. Then we have a little wheels. So there's a lot of things we need to do. Uh, You're still gonna have to use the router to, to route out I, just like the loose tenon for the, the little wheels to no, set can, into can, them. No, I can use the, the uh, table, router table, and I can just go down right where I want it and move it just a little. I don't think that's how it works. I don't care if that's how I'm gonna do it. It's danger. There's, okay, so suddenly the, building the store has become really dangerous. <laughs> you don't take it and like uh, walk it down onto the router table and go like this. You have your piece no. of wood and you take your router and you plunge cut and okay. you go a little me, bit at a time. Let me explain. And you go down, down, down. You don't do it that way. I can do it however I want. All right, so. No, that's not how woodworking that's... works. You're banned from woodworking. <laughs> You know, you're not doing it this way. All right, we're good to get moving. <laughs> All right, so that's what we have coming up. Uh, so now we just need to start cutting things down to size, uh, routing them out, and assembling. We them. can get some progress done by like getting this whole door frame kind of some success and let it dry overnight. I don't even know if we need to glue it if we're using pocket screws. Yeah, we need to glue it. Well, we don't need to wait for the glue to dry. All right, let's get going. We're going to make this work. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we have all of the styles and all of the rails cut. And so this is a rail, which is the ones that go across or horizontal. So I get to do pocket screws instead of the mortise and tenon. I was planning on doing table saws down. I don't have the jigs. We're doing pocket screws. Uh, I'm just using Craig jig. It's what we've got. I have the cheapest Craig jig I think that ever existed. Um, we got it on a super clearance. Anna has gone ahead and clamped this down to my work surface so that it doesn't move. And I'm using a impact driver to do this because I am just getting it done. And that's it. That's all these done. Uh, so we have all of the rails already, the styles already. Uh, so unless I'm using the router table to route out the thing, which Anna isn't here right now, maybe that's what I'll do. Uh, but maybe that is what I'll do. But anyway, uh, it's ready to go and be assembled. Anna caught me before I could set up the router table. So off to assembly we go. Okay, good morning. It's the next day and uh, we have two doors. So here's one of them. We just brought it in. Uh, I've already checked it. It's very square. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to put a diagonal brace across the bottom here just to keep it a little bit more square over time. Uh, I have the opportunity, so why not? So I'll be adding that in now that this is all made. It'll be easy just for me to draw it from underneath. I'll be able to draw exactly the cut it needs to be. Um, and then we get to the rest of the door assembly. So it should be pretty exciting. Oh, and major update. 
this morning the table saw decided to work. So after we changed our plans and decided to do all this, the table saw started working again. Uh, I can't say why I had hit the reset button yesterday, didn't work. Today I hit the reset button, it worked. So maybe it just needed time to think about it. <laughs> but anyway, it's back and running. All right, so doing this next. Okay, so all of my pieces are now plain and ready to be oiled. Before I oiled them though, I wanted to show you some of these pieces. So the ones I thought might be interesting and looked a little different. So here's one, which looks, I mean, it's, it's a little different, but it's okay. But look at these last two, look at this one. Look at this one. I don't know if you can see that, but that looks so different than cedar. It's also much heavier than most of the cedar. Um, smells like cedar. So I'm going to say it's cedar, but it must be heartwood or something. It looks fantastic and lots of character. Some knots though. And then look at this one. So I know you may not be able to see this, but there are like curls in here. Kind of like when you see curly maple. A uh, similar thing to where, uh, I mean, it's just super nice. So we're going to try to use this one as the vertical piece. That's going to be the front of one of the pieces of the doors. The doors are going to overlap each other, so we're going to try to have that be the vertical one. Uh, we'll see. It would have to be broken up uh, with the horizontal piece, because otherwise it's not tall enough. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to even be tall enough then, because it does have a little bit of damage here towards the top. But we'll see. It might be worth trying. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. So now I get to oil everything. Good morning, it's a great day to finish off some doors. So today we're finishing off, we gotta install the cedar. This is one of the pieces that we'll be doing vertically. Uh, it has a lot of character to it. So this is gonna be our center piece. Uh, I'll be cutting down a whole bunch though. To uh, Some will be horizontal and some will be vertical. So that's the next thing I do, need to do is cut everything down to size and then put it on the actual door frame. After that, I just have to make a little lattice opening, which is, uh, I, would, I would say it's called the Koshi. I don't know what else it's called, uh, but the lattice for the Soji screen. Um, and then I might have to finish off some uh, rice paper that we have, uh, which is literally applying the finish to it. So we'll see how that looks. Okay, so I'm going to ask Spencer, what's he up to? Because I haven't been involved with this at all. So what's going on? Okay, so I thought I'd tell you our first mistake. Oh no, so, mistake. Yeah, we we're doing really well. So this board here, this one that comes across, yeah, uh, we had measured up there that we wanted it 30 and 5 eighths inch up of where the bottom one, like basically where the uh, vertical board stop, the cedar board's coming Yeah, up. and we even compensated for the little wheel that's going to be in there. In it turns minute. out we didn't compensate. It's that 30 and 5 eighths exactly, which is the bottom of the board. So the, the vertical boards that would be here 
don't have anything to nail into. Oh no. So I'm just, instead of trying to, I was like, well, I'll just make them longer and that's how it is. But I think what I'll do is I'll just put on some stops. So I have some scrap pieces that we've already ripped down that I just found. <laughs> They're just around? They're just around. Okay. So I have a couple here and I'm just going to pre-drill and then screw them in. So then I have a nailing surface. Do you need to get it right in this little corner? No, because that has plenty of support right there. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm just going to do this. And then, uh, then that way I can go lower. That way I can make them correct length. Uh, Cause we basically we went, I don't know if we went up or down, but we, we used the measurement instead of subtracting the amount we really needed. And I will have to say that this has turned into a, let's make this door the super proper way to like, just uh, figuring out and slapping it together. Oh, like oh, I have an update. Oh, update. Uh, so okay, the look. table saw uh, started working again. Uh, okay, randomly. So our, our magic, the table saw just magically started working again uh yesterday morning it just turned on I, that that machine just likes to do that i did hit the reset button really hard uh so that was part of it i think was hitting the reset button really hard <laughs> but uh it i think it also just needed a, at least a day to think about it just yeah like, and no. we figured out a new thing we're doing well to keep this even longer and we figured out a new thing that we're doing instead of putting glass in there because glass is kind of expensive and we were trying to figure out what's the cheapest way to do everything and like maybe we could have some plastic in there because we wanted it to look kind of like rice paper anyway and like we we're like well that's also you know it's gonna look like plastic it's not it's gonna be good and so last night i figured out that hey do we need glass at all let's just put a screen in there a screen would be way cheaper yeah. yeah, and I figured this out. We have screen from my mom. Thanks, mom. It would be way cheaper. It would allow us for some airflow. And I did look up, though, if we do want to put rice paper behind it, mm -hmm. like, because now rice paper would be exposed to the elements. Yeah. If we uh, put just a finish on it, a polyurethane, which we have plenty of polyurethane, mm -hmm. if you put, you could put it on paper, because paper's wood. We'll see about that. But anyway, screen. So we're going to pivot and do stuff so we can put the screen in there and no glass. And maybe glass later if we decide it's a bad idea, but glass, no glass, screen. All right, so what's the next step here? All right, so what we decided to do is uh, we're going to put in these little wheels first. I think I'm just going to do two, and uh, I am just going to let it float. I'm a little bit hesitant to put a router on this. I'm not used to using a router and I'd have to do a plunge and it would have to be on the skinny side. We have to like make a jig to make it all like straight. And the router, it's kind of heavy to me too. And there's no way to put this vertically anyway. So I, I could have done this before we assembled it, but I didn't. <laughs> and so now uh, I need to just drill it out. So I'm just gonna use a drill instead. This drill bit, that's how wide I need this. And this drill bit is just a hair wider. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's about the same width or a hair wider. Which That'll is, be okay. Which is perfect. So I've, and, I've marked out here. Yeah. Oh, I do need oh, to put a well, piece of tape. I would like to also say that we do own a drill press and we could have also used the drill press before we assembled this, but again, we uh, didn't do that. Who am I talking to? Somebody out there Should I worry about Who is in my head now I felt your heavy breath Through darkness The smoke is getting close to my bed I cannot make that sound Empty lungs Sleeping but awake paralyzed So come There we go. Yeah, they're, they're not lined up perfectly, but you won't see the one behind it. Ah. <laughs> I can't make 
Okay, so checking in again on Spencer and seeing what he's doing. Hey. Hey. Look at this. Yeah. So both of these are done. Uh, this is the second one. So this is one that'll be on the left side. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to update you. So these are all installed. Uh, all this, it may look fancy. All it is is just the cedar fence pickets that we have just installed on here. Uh, I nailed did... directly down onto there. Nailed directly down. I did have a little bit of issues with, uh, again, the boards aren't a consistent width. So maybe I should have put them through the jointer that we now have. Uh, but it works just fine. It looks great. So now what we need to do is we need to flip it over and we need to start, I need to start building the Soji screen part, which is going to be up here. It's just like the, uh, it's like what we did for the Koshi, uh, where it's the little slats. But this time we're going to do a slip joint where that's where they go into each other slip joint. So it ends uh, up being flat rather so than So it ends up being flat. flat. Yeah. And uh, I have to cut a whole bunch of strips first, get those, I need the material to work with, and then I can put it through the table saw and create the slip joints, and then uh, put it together and uh, put it in. Here, so can I hand you this? Yeah. And you point it at me? Sure. And bonus, the width of these uh, two by fours, two by sixes, or these two by fours? Two by sixes. So the bonus is that the width of these two by sixes is smaller than the width of one of these cedar fence pickets. So we have a little lip here. So we can hide our um, Soji screen frame behind this and you hopefully won't see it. We're moving through the night like we're from a different star. Flying over streets and the broken hearts. So we did some figuring. <laughs> All right. So our main goal in this is trying to get this done today. I should emphasize this is our only day to work on this. So this is speed over, um, not accuracy, speed over proper. Uh, the proper way of doing things. So the proper way to do this is to use a slip joint. I think that's what it's called, where the two pieces like go together. Um, so your two pieces that would come across, you'd have a piece cut out of each one and they would slip together. And they'd be nice and flush. Uh, so that takes a lot of time, a lot of precision. And uh, for us, we haven't done it before. Yep. And so uh, we're just going to nail them in place. We think it looks yeah. fine. And uh, originally for this thing, I was thinking, oh, we need to build the frame. And then if we were going to use like screen as in like for like a screen window, I was thinking we'd have to like stretch it around it and like staple it on the sides and all this stuff. But then you were like, why don't we just like if we use that? Ignore, the, right, you go ignore the whole it outside. and just like staple it flat to the back of the door. Right. You just then... go across the whole thing. Yes. That's what I was thinking from the get go. No, well, that's what you just told me. So, yeah. So, yeah. and then we, I would do that with the paper that we're going to use, uh, which is a cotton paper. It turns out, uh, I would do that, but the paper is not large enough. And then if we decide that, um, all of this is, uh, terrible and we need to actually use glass, then there's still thickness in here to just install this, uh, Soji screen grid. Yeah and then just drop the glass in behind it and we don't have to change anything. Right, I mean, it'll be fine. So we're trying to get these done. So this one's almost ready. We're gonna go with this and then we have the second one and then we gotta go put them in. Uh, the only thing we need to do up there is put in stops for everything to make sure you know it's yeah. all actually secure and nice. And stops or AKA are like track. Yeah, I mean, the stops are the track, yeah. Yeah, the stops are the track at the top. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna put these in right now using the pin nailer. So different nailer, we're gonna use a pin nailer, we're gonna put these in and it's gonna look great. There. I don't know if this looks very Soji screen or not. Hey, let me take a look. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Let's yeah. just leave it without anything in there. It's pretty good. It I looks, mean, we could. It looks like glass. It does look like glass. <laughs> yeah. It looks like very clean glass. Yeah, very, very The birds clean would glass. appreciate it. Yeah. All right, here, let's go take this into the shed.
Hey, that yeah. looks really, really good. You just, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, but <laughs> that looks good. Okay, so what's going on, Anna? Okay, so the verdict is, is that this screen doesn't look as bad as we thought it might. <laughs> It's a little gray here. It's I'll a come little gray. It's not, it's not the like perfect see-through, no-see screen. So this isn't metal. This is plastic material and it's gray, not black. Right. So we were looking at it and thinking this doesn't look that great. But honestly, once it's in place, it's catching the light. It looks good. Yeah, I think it looks good. It gives yeah. enough like you can't, the kind of not being able to see in there exactly is yeah. kind of a good thing. And it saves us anywhere from $30 for the minimum cheapest thing we could do. That Which was the white, like for sale sign material. But plastic. Just, just white. And shiny. And then to the most expensive was probably like $180 for tempered glass. Yeah. And this would keep out the bugs. It would keep out the birds. And like, like airflow like just naturally. Yeah. We'd even with the doors closed. Um, I don't know if I'd be hanging out in there with the doors closed. I don't know if you? that's good or bad because humidity. But I think humidity. I think it's getting in there. Know, We're not running an AC in there, so. I yeah. I think that the humidity is going to be in there. It's going to be no matter what the ambient humidity yeah. is anyway. So only sad part is we're going to have to take that down. But let's let's go ahead and do the second door. Okay. Get that ready. Staple that. Staple it on that. Mm -hmm. And then install the stops. And then we'll have a door. Hey Anna. Hello. All right. So what are you what are you doing? I'm attaching screen to our door, which is now a screen door, <laughs> apparently, rather than a like it's a Soji style, um, but now we're doing a screen instead of like um, whatever you use for that. Wouldn't be paper for outside. So it's a Soji Soji screen styled Soji screen door. So Soji screen. Screen door. door. The Soji screen door. <laughs> you could just put those two words together, yeah. I guess. I mean, I guess it does mean something distinctive. You say Soji screen, screen door. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now that these are done, we have to go put them up there and actually install the stops for them. Yeah. So that's what we got to do because mm -hmm. we're running out of light. <laughs> okay. Hey. I don't know if that's exactly where it needs to be. So we want to put the stop behind that one first, and then we'll do the stop in front of this one. Okay, so we're installing the stops on the inside. Uh, these doors ended up being thicker than the opening space that we had, uh, especially after you factor in that they're a little bit in to the board. They're not actually flush to the outside. Uh, so we're doing two thick on the outside here, and then we'll do another one here. And that should keep it in line really, really well. Uh, so I'm gonna just use the nailer, and I'm gonna install these one at a time as we go across. Uh, and I'm doing this instead of Anna, just because this, this uh, nailer, it's a little heavy for Anna. Uh, she doesn't really like doing it. That's so. true. It is heavy. All right, ready? There you go. There, <laughs> there you go. go. Okay. And th this is kind of like a cleat that we're making. Yeah. And these are our leftover scraps. So using more scraps. Yes, these are all leftover scraps. Yeah. Hey. So I did want to point out what I was trying to point out before. There's a track that goes all the way along this top side here that I did that keeps this online as well. And both of the doors, basically because they overlap each other, they keep each other in check on this side. 
uh, in the middle area, they're always pushing against each other. So that way it not only keeps some bugs out, hopefully, but it also keeps them from uh, going any which way. And then now if I close it, and I haven't tried closing it from this side yet, let me see if I can do it. There we go. So if I close it here, it's now pretty secure. If I wanted to make it to where somebody couldn't break in, it's not a big problem here, but if I did want that, we could just put a lock right here, down at the bottom, anywhere on this, on this area, and we could be able to lock it closed. I might put one just right here where they both kind of touch. But there you go. So that's installed. Well, that's it. The door is finished. Yeah, and I think it worked out pretty well considering. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously there were some changes that we had to do. So the table saw stopped working. So that kind of ruined the mortise and tenon idea. Yeah, so we went from like professional woodworking techniques to kind of janky slap together kind. <laughs> I mean, kind of. I mean, it's still pocket holes. It is a real way to do it. It's just not the way I was hoping to do it. Well, and to be fair, like it's not a hinge door where we have to wor use like worry about like structural integrity of them on the swinging right. action. Since they're rolling, they're pretty stable. Right. Um, and there is some wood glue in there that should hold it a little bit. I know it's ingrained along grain, so it's not really quite the same. Uh, but it looks great. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't expect to use the mesh, the window mesh over it. I don't know what it's called. I guess that's what it's called. Screen. But screen over it. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it looks pretty good considering we're not putting glass in there. Um, I think it's better than any sort of like paper or plastic that we could put on there. Paper would probably just last like a day. Right, and cheaper plastic would just look bad. Yeah, it was like shiny and not so, great. And then if somebody was gonna break into the shed, they're gonna break in either way, like glass or not. Um, you know, if it's tip or glass, they just don't get hurt at all. Yeah, so. that's true. So anyway, uh, I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with the final outcome of it. Uh, it does look exactly the way we had drawn it on the original drawing that you made, I feel like a year ago. <laughs> it wasn't quite that. It was in February of this year, and we're now in September. A bit longer of a project than we anticipated, <laughs> but there was a big massive break in there too, so there's, there's that. But so anyway, the doors are done. We're really excited. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. And there are more videos to come. We got to talk about costs and a few other videos as well. So we're not done with the shed yet, but we're happy to start moving on to other projects. Thanks.